Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So just a reminder, in the previous videos, we've talked about first order, linear, separable differential equations with non-constant coefficients. And these took the form of y prime plus a of x times y equals b of x. And as I demonstrated at the end of the previous video, I showed that differential equations of this form are not always separable, meaning that we can't always put the x's with the dx and the y's with the dy's, which would look something like this. Now, if we were able to algebraically manipulate our differential equation into this form right here, then we would just be able to integrate both sides because it's separable. But in this video, we are going to consider the cases where our differential equation is not separable, meaning that we cannot just use straight up integration after a little bit of algebraic manipulation in order to isolate the variables. So the way we would solve non-separable differential equations is by using what's called an integrating factor. So an integrating factor is used for first order non-separable differential equations. Now before we move on, I do want to say that we can use the method of integrating factors not only to solve non-separable differential equations, but we can also use this method to solve separable equations and constant coefficient equations that we originally considered a few videos back. However, if our first order linear differential equation is non-separable, then we must use an integrating factor. So we can think of the method of integrating factor as a more general strategy to solve first order equations because it works with everything else that we've considered. So we can define this integrating factor as a function of x and we'll denote it as mu of x. So this is our integrating factor. And what we want to do is we want to multiply through our entire differential equation by this function mu of x. So when I do that, what I get is mu of x times y prime plus mu of x times a of x times y. And this is equal to mu of x times b of x. So at this point, you guys are probably saying, what was the point of that? Why would we multiply it through by a function if it doesn't really change anything? Well, it actually lets us take advantage of the product rule from calculus. So recall the product rule. If we have two functions, u and v, and we take the derivative of it, then this is just equal to u prime times v plus u times v prime. So what I can say is that the integral of u prime times v plus u v prime is equal to the integral of u times v prime, which is just equal to u times v. So we're going to use this fact right here in order to integrate our left-hand side of our equation right here. So now all we need to do is pick a mu of x or an integrating factor that allows this left-hand side to satisfy this form right here. So what I mean is let's go ahead and let our y equal to u. So if I rewrite this differential equation, what I get is mu of x times u prime plus mu of x times a of x times u, and this is equal to mu of x times b of x. So now it's easier to see that this coefficient right here has to be v, and this coefficient right here has to be v prime in order for it to satisfy this form so that we can integrate and get this. So we know that v has to be mu of x, and we know that v prime has to be mu of x times a of x. And then we also know that the derivative of v with respect to x has to equal v prime. So when I use the fact that dv dx is equal to v prime, and I plug in using v prime and v expressions, what I get is d mu of x dx is equal to mu of x times a of x. So now we know this to be a separable differential equations because I can bring the mu of x on the left side and the dx on the other side. And what I get is d mu of x over mu of x is equal to a of x dx. So now I can integrate both sides. And what I get is the natural log of mu of x is equal to the integral of a of x dx. And I can't evaluate this integral because I don't know what a of x is, but I can take the exponential of both sides 
and I can obtain an expression for our integrating factor mu of x. So what this gives me is mu of x is equal to e to the integral of a of x dx. So what we've done is we've derived an expression for our integrating factor that is necessary to solve this equation up here. So when I take our differential equation that we started with and I multiply through by our integrating factor mu of x, we get an equation that looks like this. Then we know that as long as we pick our integrating factor to be of this form that we just derived, then we can just straight up integrate the left hand side of this equation with respect to x because we know that this and that I have in brackets right here satisfies this form of the product rule. So this left hand side integrates to u times v or in other words it integrates to mu of x times y. And then we can integrate this right hand side with respect to x just like we would integrate anything else in calculus. So we can say that mu of x times y is equal to the integral of mu of x b of x dx. So now our differential equation takes on the form of this, which we now have the tools to be able to solve. So what I think that's pretty cool is that we can pick a function, multiply through the whole entire equation in a way that allows us to integrate our function y without even knowing what our function y is. So if you guys are a little confused on why this integrating factor is necessary, then let me illustrate it with this example. If I have a function y of x and I want to integrate it with respect to x, then I cannot say that this is just x times y of x because our function y of x can be anything. It can be cosine of x, it can be x squared, and depending on what actually is included in our expression y of x, then our integral comes out to be something different. So this would not be true. I would actually have to know what our function is in order to integrate it. Because if y of x is equal to x squared, then the integral of y of x dx is actually equal to 1 3rd x cubed, not x times y of x, which would give me x cubed. So that's why we have to take advantage of the product rule, because it allows us to integrate the left hand side without actually knowing what our function y of x is. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and work through a couple examples demonstrating this process that we just went over. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.